Hey guys, welcome to the first Sign of Good Health podcast. This is an interview with William Sturgeon, a friend of mine out in Marshall, Minnesota. I didn't have the name when I filmed it, so it's going to be a little bit jumpy to intro because I was calling it a different name, but anyway, please enjoy. So I'm here with William Sturgeon from Restored Strength in Marshall. So William, why don't you give us a little intro about your gym? Yeah. Uh, Alright, uh, thank you for having me, Alex. Um, so I own a gym here in Marshall, Restored Strength. We do semi-private uh, training, which means we, we're in a small group setting of one to five people per coach. And what we do is we individualize programs for everybody in the fact that uh, everybody is going to be doing their workouts together, but everybody's going to be doing their own individualized thing. Today we're going to talk about where do you get, st where do you start with um, getting in shape? Because there's just so much information out there. There's a lot of programs and diets and fads and all that. So. How, do, how would someone start because it can feel overwhelming? That's a great question, Alex. Uh, the, the biggest thing I recommend is hiring a professional. Uh, that's going to be the biggest bang for your buck is the investment that you make. Most people will, will want to start getting in shape. They, they have the right intentions. The thing that becomes difficult is oftentimes our services as coaches is is of a higher value so so most people will will shy away from a price but when you look at it it's no more than what you would pay for a car payment uh, and the thing is that we need to look at is that a car payment or that investment that you make in a vehicle won't last as long as your health so when we look at what we do as as professionals you you want to be able to look at wanting to invest within yourself for a long term of wanting to better your health and wanting to live better, live longer, whatever it may be. So when it comes to trying to uh, not overwhelm yourself with with the idea of wanting to get in shape with all this information is, is being able to hire a professional. The professional that you're going to hire, hopefully it's someone good, will allow you to filter out all that information. So for, for my members, a lot of the things that I advise to them is that when it comes to information pertaining uh, nutrition, fitness, all these other things that are out there, I ask them to relay the information to me so that I can be their sponge and their filter. I absorb everything they take, uh, they've read, I absorb everything I've read, and I filter out on what's going to be actually applicable, what's applicable, and what, what actually makes sense. So let's, let's really fine tune the idea of wanting to invest within your health by hiring a coach. Now, if that becomes an issue where we, we don't have quite the finances for it, the, the thing that you can do to begin with is something as simple as moving for five minutes. And if moving for five minutes becomes too challenging for yourself, begin with three minutes. So the thing that when it comes to wanting to better your health and where you're at, I, I like to look at uh, three things in particular. Uh, the first thing I look at is, are you moving daily? And if you're not, let's get you moving every day. I, again, refer to Max Shank's 5-Minute Flow. It's a, it's a great program. It's a great way to start your, your, your journey on wanting to better your health. Uh, the second thing I look at is what your water intake looks like. If you're not drinking enough water right now, let's try to increase that. And the, the third thing is making sure that you're, you're meeting yourself where you're at. Mm -hmm. So oftentimes people will want to lose weight, they want to get in shape, they want to be healthier, but they, they start off far too quickly or they're consistently comparing themselves to other people. And the reality is you need to start where you're at and then you'll, you'll see where you are and then just making a small incremental change throughout each day, each week, each month. So just beginning slowly will, will allow you to, to begin on that right path towards wanting to better your health. Right. So a coach can help you kind of cut through the noise and focus on what's actually going to be effective for you and save you a lot of time and frustration of experimenting with stuff that may not actually work for you. What kind of stuff would you look for for a trainer? Like if you're a, if, if you're a client looking for a trainer, what characteristics or style or whatever would you be looking for? Um, when, when we look at that, the question is, what are you looking for? And what I mean by what are you looking for is, is what's going to be a right fit for you? So when we look at that, when you're looking at hiring a coach, there's going to be a lot of 
education, there's going to be a lot of credentials, you're going to see uh, kettlebell coaches, sandbag coaches, barbell coaches, there's going to be a vast variety of coaches on, on what system they use, what implement of tool they use, and that's, you know, if you have a specific goal towards wanting to learn kettlebells and be a better, better kettlebell person, hire a kettlebell coach. If you're, if you're wanting to, to be a power lifter and you want to understand barbell work and barbell technique, learn to find a coach who is an expert in that. Uh, now, there's not always going to be someone who's going to be specializing or is such in specific work for that. So the other thing you need to look for is, is what's the culture like? What is it like for, for the members who work with this coach or at this facility? What, what is it like? What is the embodiment like? Who are they training? Who is, who is it that they're working with? Because if, if, if I'm a powerlifting coach and I focus strictly on barbell and, and, and I have a militant style of training behind it, that's not going to be appealing to my 40-year-old mother who is wanting to lose weight. It, it's, I don't want somebody who's going to be screaming at my face telling me to, to max out uh, such a heavy, heavy lift. I, I just want to play with my kids and feel better. So, so when we look at that, look at what the culture is. Are, are these clients having fun? Are they seeing the results? Are there people there who resemble what you look like or how you feel like? Um, because I think that's the big thing is... Uh, you, you need to find a place where you feel like you're going to belong. And that's all dependent on the coach, uh, the facility, and also just the, the amount of culture and community that is behind where it is. So find a place where you know that you're going to feel welcome, that you're going to have fun, because I've seen it time and time again with a handful of my members where they've worked with coaches in the past and it was a matter of them feeling as if their coach was more of a workout buddy, where they gossiped more than they did training, or they, they didn't listen to what they were telling them for their results or what their goals were. Mm -hmm. So it made it challenging for them to, to have that experience with those coaches. So again, I, I think it really just stems down to um, when you're looking for a coach, it's not, a, it's not about uh, the idea of what their education, what their credentials are. Don't get me wrong, that's extremely important. Yeah. But it, it's more important to find where you feel that you're going to belong more than anything. Right. It sounds like a big important thing is making sure that you and the coach are both working towards choosing the right goals. Mm -hmm. Right. And then that's the thing is, is your coach should should be interested in what your goals are. They should help you find how realistic those goals are and also they should be able to really be be able to per, provide you a plan to get to that goal and be realistic with how long it may take because sometimes people will come in with an expectation of losing, losing 20 pounds in a matter of three months. Well, ideally that sounds great, but unless you, you have the self-discipline in the, the exact motivation and drive to accomplish that. Um, but if you're coming from a background of never doing anything physical, if your nutrition is poor, if your sleep is poor, um, the idea of you losing that amount of weight in that three months is, is unlikely because the, the change hasn't been established yet. You you haven't initially built up the, the, the right steps towards that. So uh, being able to find a coach who's going to allow you to be realistic with your goals um, and also just make sure that they have their, your best interest in you because sometimes coaches get in the idea of trying to just sell more sessions. Maybe they're selling products alongside with it. Whatever it may be, try to, try to avoid somebody who's going to try to continue to sell more to you. But in reality, find somebody who's going to want to see you succeed and want to see you be able to achieve the goal that you're, you're wanting to accomplish. Right. Um, and I think another problem is people see these 30 or 90 day transformations on Facebook or whatever and it may create some unrealistic expectations with like, you know, they, they don't necessarily know that all the manipulation that goes into those photos, like taking the photo of different focus lengths and um, slouching and not flexing and everything. And, the shorts or like covering the thighs versus not and so there's just all these photo tricks 
<laughs> yeah, I mean, that's, that's a huge point. I, I, I notice that is that well, well, people will find ways to, to manipulate those 30 day things. And um, again, I'm not trying to speak down upon any sort of system, but right. when I look at uh, some of the beach body, body programs, all those people in there are extremely fit already. The majority of those clients, or the majority of those people who are starting those programs, are nowhere near in shape, and, and that kind of baffles me. Is is how is it that you're going to to uh, watch all these people who are already fit work out and try to manipulate or try to try to uh, replicate mm -hmm. the the exercises that they're doing? It, it's just it, it's mind blowing because when when we look at again the majority of members who I work with are just general pop people who are just mm -hmm. Uh, mainly like 70% female here, uh, people who are just wanting to lose weight, feel a little bit better. There's, there's no intensity here, there's no comparison of trying to compete with each other. We're all here to accomplish the same goal in different ways. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so and speaking of working with women, like, uh, that's a big problem I've run into when talking with clients or prospective clients is that kind of self-consciousness and fear. You want to talk about how to work with people to overcome that hesitation? Um, that's something that, that, that comes in time. It's something that's challenging because many people will come to you and, and they're going to be self-conscious. 99% of the time they're afraid to come in because they're afraid of judgment. They're afraid of what people will think. They're afraid of not doing exercises properly. They're afraid of of a majority of different things that come into play that you and I don't have necessarily because this is our area of comfort. This is the gym is such a easy, relaxed place for us. But for for new prospective clients, it's the most scariest thing that they've ever done because they're they're being in a in an environment that they're vulnerable in front of a lot of people who are strangers. Um, so for me, I'm lucky enough to own my own facility where I, I'm able to create a culture and community where people are are so welcoming and that's the thing that we we really thrive on and that we really make a, a good point to get across is how welcoming this community is because um, it's it's easier when you do things with more people and and more people who can relate to you and say hey that exercise that you're doing there is really challenging I remember when I first started it and you can t and they can begin to make these conversations of of how difficult or how challenging things have been for them, but within time and consistency, they're, they're able to be proficient through these exercises or proficient in their nutrition or uh, they, they're able to overcome the challenges that they had. So in order for us as coaches to be able to slowly alleviate some of that tension and that uh, hesitation to come through, it's, it, it's our duty to be the the coach and the catalyst to um, like be the mood setter. Be, be, be the mood setter, but also be be the person who who takes away that that uh, un unexpectation of of wanting to be perfect when they come in. So yeah. so when you let them know that they can make mistakes, that you you have no expectations for them to remember anything of the names of how to do the exercises. That's something that I've made very clear when new members come in is that I always tell them that I don't expect them to remember everything that we did. I don't even expect them to remember any of the names. I just want you to come in. After that, I take care of everything else, and that's what our job should be. So, so to to dial back and make make that easier of a transition for them, uh, be be humble, uh, be empathetic. So so be able to relate to them understand that they're they're going to be uncomfortable but also make life the mood have fun uh, make jokes relate to them relay stories if you're in any any uh, small group training setting where you have maybe one or two other members find ways for them to connect find ways to to establish communication within each other so for us we always make it a a priority for our members to have at least one minimal conversation with each other um, and with everybody within the room. Mm -hmm. If it's somebody who is a new member that they've never met before, we'll stop everything that we're doing and we'll play around with the name game. Say your name, ask a question, and answer it. And for those of us who are a little more 
introverted and they just feel very self-conscious, that's it's optional. You don't have to do it. Right. But it's, it's a fun way to get people engaged more because when you can really establish a community and when you can really establish relationships amongst other members, that's when, that's when it becomes easier and that's when it becomes less daunting. That's when it becomes not so scary. So, so to, to answer that question of, of uh, wanting to, to alleviate some of those uh, issues that you may see when you come into the door, just be friendly, uh, realize that everything's going to take time and that you have no set expectations for them except for showing up. One of the other most common excuses is, I don't have time. Do you want to give me your thoughts on that? Honestly, I, I will openly admit that I fall victim to, and it's not victim, it's just I use that as an excuse, mm -hmm. um, is I don't have time. And it's not that I don't have time, it's just that I didn't make it a priority to find time. So I look at it as the way that I look at money to an extent, is, is time, is, is, they're both relatable. Um, so what, what the way that I relate to both is when I hear people say I don't have the, the funds for a coach, it's looking at, well, how much money are you spending on medication? How much, and those medications are extremely needed, right? Um, and, and I look at it as, as a way as, well, how would it be if you could initially kind of wean yourself away from those medications and lower the prescription? Well, that'd be great. I'd be able to save a lot of money. Right. You could do that by being healthier and by moving, cleaning up your nutrition. Um, also, we look at things as if, how much money are you spending when going out to eat? If you add up a month, of eating Taco Bell or McDonald's every single day, I mean, that adds up to well over $200, which could be initially the, the cost of going to see a coach. So there's always going to be available time and money. It's just a matter of where you lie your priorities. Right. So when it comes to finding the time, it's a matter of, of what are you willing to sacrifice right off the bat? Are you willing to give up an extra hour of sleep to come into the gym and work out to better your health? To to be able to live longer for your children, to be able to live the life that you want to live, to be able to do the things that you want to do without restriction. Are you willing to give up an hour of Netflix for that? Uh, are you willing to give up an hour of Facebook? So, so when we look at the grand scheme of things, an hour is only 60 minutes. Um, if you track throughout your day where you're prioritizing your time and where you find yourself losing time because you don't have it, it's a matter of what's distracting you from making that time. Right. So if you can get into the idea of, of wanting to highlight something in your day, meaning it's, it's a matter of making it a priority and not making any excuse and, and making sure that you do everything in, in your possibility to make sure that you find that time for that highlight of your day, uh, you, you can make it possible. So, so it's just a matter of, uh, of taking a week looking at how you're spending your time, where you're investing your time, and finding areas that you can give up and you can you can snowball that time towards towards your health. Right. And um, one thing that's really important with that is the concept of self-honesty. Like you need to know and actually be honest with what you're eating, what you're doing with your time, and where you're at with your fitness level. Oh yeah, yeah, and that's just something that I think clients come into us and see us with with this misperceived idea that they have to be completely um, healthy before they see us, which is insane because um, yeah, that's not the, really the, the idea of it. You know, when we look at things, I, I love being able to be honest with my members. I always tell I always tell them that if you're honest with me, the things that we want to improve on and we want to see happen, we can make happen. Um, so when we look at that, when, you, when you're up front, because a lot of times when you ask clients about why they're not making the, their goals or, or their, their homework, whatever it may be, uh, well, I, I don't know, is always the biggest question. And that's the biggest lie. You know, you do know. You absolutely do know. But it's, it's hard for us to be honest because the, these members and these clients of ours, they... They feel as if we're going to judge them. They feel as if we're going to get upset or, or, or that they've, they've let us down to some extent. In reality, uh, and, and this is just for me, I don't, I don't want to speak for anybody else, but um, 
for me, I'd rather have my members tell me that they're not following their, their, their habits of the week, that they're not doing the exercises I have them prescribed to do at home. I'd rather them be honest and tell me about it because the thing is, maybe they're not enjoying that. Maybe that's just not the right goal for them. Maybe it's not the right prescription that they need. Um, so let's modify that. Let's find something that you actually will enjoy. So when it comes to those ideas of their nutrition and the changing of everything, uh, you just need to be able to to set that standard right off the bat with your new members and say, hey, I want you to be as honest with me as, as, as you can because that's going to help me make you become more successful and I'm not ever going to get mad at you. I'm never going to be disappointed in you because I know you're trying and as long as we're trying and we're making that conscious effort of trying to be better, that's, that's the biggest thing is we can always just keep trying and trying until we find something that works. If you're hiding things from me and you're not being honest with me and yourself, I won't be able to get you the results you want. So, so it's just relaying that information of being upfront and honest and knowing that there's no set expectation of, of where they should be at when they begin. It's a matter of how can we make you better than you were yesterday or the day before. Right, and that's again speaking to the power of having a coach that can either be like a mirror or a guide as you're trying to navigate all this. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. So we got a few more. Um, so I want, wanted to talk to you about the concept of crawl before you walk. So with starting to work out, um, people see lifting like 800 pounds or whatever. Like what kind of movements would a person expect to be doing when they're starting to work out? Honestly, it just, it just varies on the coach. So for us, a lot of it is just a set foundation of of uh, basically using your body and understanding how well your body moves and how it works because a lot of people see the bigger picture of an exercise. So for, for example, the Turkish get up is a fine example of an exercise where people always see the whole picture of it and go, holy, can I swear? Yeah. Okay, they, they look at it and they're like, holy shit, how am I going to do that? And, and uh, and, and then you, you, you look at it and say, well, we're not going to begin with that whole big picture. I just wanted you to see what you can build yourself up to. Right. So, so when we digress and we have all these regressions on these exercises, so when you refer to it as crawling before walking, um, I even bring it down to we need to breathe before we can move because oftentimes people will see, see the bigger picture and it's so hard to, to see the smaller pictures in between because... Um, my members who are doing barbell deadlifts in comparison to my members who are just learning how to do a basic hip hinge. They're like, well, how, when do I expect to get there? Or how do you expect me to do that? I don't. Right. I don't expect you to do that. I expect you to, to be able to, to get the movement down first. And once you've shown progression there, where I can trust you enough that you know your own body, yeah, I'm going to give you a weight. And then we're going to progress. So when you, when you begin... Uh, with that, I think a lot of people need to get in the mind and the concept that the bigger picture will happen, but it's not going to happen quickly. It's going to take time. Mm -hmm. It's going gonna, it's gonna to make sure that us as coaches, we're taking, we're taking the right progressions and the right steps to, be, to get you to where, where that next goal is or that next progression is. Because it, if I'm an ignorant coach and I say, oh, you want to do a barrel of deadlift, but you've never done a hip hinge before, let's go and do it. I blow out your back, you sue me, I lose my, my, my ability to coach. Right. Um, and, and it's sad to say, but there's people out there like that. So, so when, you, when you are working with a coach, for, for people out there who are listening to this, and, and your, your coach is having you do, do a bunch of bodyweight exercises at first, and a bunch of really simplistic exercises, that's a good coach. That's a really good coach because they're taking the time and the efforts to, to build up a good foundational strength. So, so when we look at a tree, I look at the roots because that's the strength in the foundation, not the trunk, not the branches. It's the roots that hold the tree there. So if, if I can get the seed planted in you of all these basic foundation of movement, dead bugs, bird dogs, breathing, rocking, rolling, a bunch of OS stuff, um, if I can just get you to, to see the value in these small movements and how that gets easier as we progress through our training and when I give you a weight, you can see that. 
I, I hear this a lot when I regress a member. They'll thank me for it. Your, your, your clients will always thank you when you regress them with an exercise. Sometimes it's not always the case. They're like, well, I can do it. Well, you're, you're, you're seeing some difficulties through the talent, the, right. the exercise. Um, but when you regress them, they thank you for it because they're stressed out. They're, they're really aggravated. They're annoyed with the movement because they're not getting it down. And you're giving them all these coaches, these visuals, these kinetic. Uh, kinetic cues and all these other things and it's just not getting in. It's like, you know what? I'm not going to grab a square peg and put it in a hole because it's not going to fit. Right. So let's let's dial it back. Let's let's see what else we can do that replicates that same motion. Mm -hmm. And that's when they're like, I get this now. And that's that aha moment where they're like, oh, okay, this makes it easier. And then you revisit that lift next week. So, so I really think that people need to understand how important the basis the, the basics are because that's going to be your base set foundation. Right. So, so again, if you're working with a coach and they're having you do these very simplistic motions, just thank them because they're taking the time to help you build up. Yeah, and I definitely was that coach. As a mistake I made at the beginning was trying to teach him like a, a deadlift, which seems simple, but then as I'm coaching, I'm realizing, oh, there's actually a lot to this that <laughs> not everybody knows. So it's something I've, I've learned. Um, and I think another thing that people it gets in the way um, is just ego like there's a lot to these basic movements even and there's a lot of value in them and people don't want to spend the time to develop that base strength and coordination they just want to be lifting the 800 pounds or whatever right and, I, and it's it's a thing in society as ourselves and i think we're all all envious of uh, not envious but we're all we're all guilty of that um we're envious of other people who can do things better than us or they're, they're progressing quicker, uh, the thing is we need to stop and think, how long has this person actually been doing this? Because uh, we, we get in this idea that we need to compare ourselves to other people, we'll compare ourselves to other coaches, we'll compare ourselves to people, experts in the field that we're following, we'll compare ourselves to a coworker, whatever it may be, we're, we're constantly comparing ourselves to other people and we're not comparing ourselves to ourselves. We're not seeing hey, I just learned how to do a hip hinge. That's awesome, because I have never did a hip hinge before, but now I'm learning it. Um, so, so I really think that we need to be more patient with things and that we need to understand that things will happen and it will just take a little more time than what we expect. Um, so when it comes to those, I those ideas of wanting to lift that 800 pounds, it's doable, but it's just going to take a lot of time and effort into doing it. I always tell my members when they see me, uh, do certain exercises or mobility drills. They're like, oh wow, you're so mobile doing it. Well, I've been doing this for five, ten, whatever years. Uh, when we look at it too, is I, I do I say this back to them. I'm like, if I were to go and do your job, I wouldn't have an idea of what to do. But you know exactly what to do because you've been doing it for years. You've ingrained that pattern. You know the ins and outs of what it is that your job is. I do the same thing with my job. So it's hard for us to compare each other. To, to apples and oranges, mm -hmm. right? So, so it's just a matter of, of not having uh, an expectation of what you you should be compared to somebody else. It's a matter of, of having expectation is of yourself to yourself. Am I better than what I was yesterday? Am I better than I, who I was a year ago? Because that's the only thing that's going to really matter. Right. Speaking of being better than you were yesterday, um, what do you think the most important thing is for making a positive change? Yeah, so, so making a positive change is, is, um, is something that I always reinforce with my members of giving an example of where they were when they started. So, uh, for example, one of my members, Sarah, when she had first started with me, she had came in with uh, a lot of low back pain. Um, she had wanted to just try to, she'd been doing fitness for a while and just wasn't getting the results. Um, so when we look at a positive change, I always refer to her back to um, when you first came into the door. Imagine how much pain you're in compared to where you're at right now. She's like, it's, it, it, it always makes me feel good when I hear this. And it also kind of like, it messes with my mind too to think about it is, I'm not in pain anymore. And that's the thing where, where a lot of members say that. Like, well, I don't feel pain anymore when I move. I, this walking upstairs doesn't hurt me. Um, carrying in the groceries isn't a, uh, isn't a taxing thing. Uh, another prime example is uh, our, our rebel Melissa. She uh, dealt with migraines for many, many years. 
So when she had hired coaches in the past, it was only 15 minutes into their training session and she would have a migraine. Hmm. And it was debilitating to the point that she couldn't do anything throughout the rest of her day. She had told me that when she would, during summer when she would mow the lawn, she'd have to do it on Friday. So then she'd take all Saturday off to deal with her migraine. So since her and I have been training, it's almost been a year, but after our first three months of training, she had no migraines. Um, and, and when she did, she'd be able to re reduce them by, by doing some breathing drills that I had shown her. She was able to reduce the amount of medication she was taking. She's no longer living a life of fear revolving around that migraine because uh, we, we took the right steps to progress her where she would be. So for, for me, the way I always get positive reinforcement is reminding my members of, of where they were to where they're at today. And seeing it increase, whether it be strength, whether it be weight loss, whether it be mobility, or just seeing them as a whole, meaning their self-confidence has increased. The way they help hold themselves up, mm -hmm. they're they're more respectful of themselves, meaning they, they they expect more from themselves, and they don't allow themselves to to uh, entertain the idea of this is it. No, they they, they see the the motive of like, yeah, I can do a little more or I can sh do one more push up, whatever it is. So I, I love being able to get the positive feedback with my members by showing them and informing them about the progress that they've made so far and where they were at when they began. Okay. So the last question is, um, I wonder if we can figure out giving people a few steps. So either like a new year's resolution or whatever, they're feeling fired up. They're like, okay, I want to get mm -hmm. in shape. Let's go. Where do we, like where do they start? Uh, my my first thing is going to be what is your goal? What is it that you want to do? And let's let's look at smart goals, specific, measurable, attainable, reachable, uh, and setting a time, hmm. uh, or realistic, whatever you want to call the R, uh, the refer to the R acronym. Um, so so setting a smart goal for yourself is going to be the biggest thing. Is just realizing that you want to make a change, that you want to make a difference. Uh, the second thing is going to be knowing that that change is going to take a lot of time, and it's going to be, it's going to be fighting years of bad habits, years of sitting at a desk job, years of poor nutrition, poor sleep, uh, lack of, of of movement. So, so it's just being consciously aware that it's going to take a very very long time uh, to achieve those goals, but just realizing that if you're consistent with it. And I mean every single day you're, you're striving towards one small thing because too many people get in the mindset that they need to cut out carbohydrates, they're going to need to do the latest keto fad diet, that they're going to need to do the craziest new workouts that everybody else is doing. Realistically, when you look at wanting to set a New Year's resolution goal, um, my, my first piece of advice would be seek out a professional, hire somebody who can get you those goals, those results. Second thing is going to just be setting smart goals, making sure that you're realistic with what you want to accomplish and you're specific with what you want to accomplish. The third thing is just making sure that you're, you're making small changes. So for a prime example, when I first started really getting involved in my nutrition, I looked at where I was extremely weak. I never ate vegetables. And that's, that's like shocking to people like, oh, you're a health coach and, or you're a coach and you're not doing vegetables. No, I don't like them. Like, we're real people. We're, we're, we're in the same boat as you. I love chili cheese fries and pizza and wings. Um, people love eating out. People do all these things. We're the same way. We're no different from you. We just have a, a, a more, more knowledge in those areas, but it doesn't mean that we're applying all these principles, right? We're, right. we're, we're, we're same people. So, so for me, when it came to really vamping up my nutrition and taking my, my nutrition more serious, it was a matter of what I didn't do, and I didn't eat vegetables, so for me it was a matter of taking a few weeks of experimenting with what ones I liked and what ones I didn't like. So when I found ones that I enjoyed, I would just make it a goal every day to have a half a cup or a full cup of whatever it was, spinach, broccoli, asparagus, whatever it was. I just made sure that I made it a goal just to eat it. If I, Even if I didn't enjoy it and I like somewhat enjoyed it, I just, okay, it's just a half a cup. It's not going to kill me. Right. Um, and, I, and, I, and I built that up to a point where I'm like, this is easy. And, and I had it in every meal. I had it every single day where once that one small thing became easy and it took 
about two months for it to become easy, that's when I allowed myself to add one more thing, and that was to increase my protein intake. So uh, again, and it's just stemming off of that. So I think people focus too much on the big goal and they don't focus on the, the starting point of where they're at. So if you can start your New Year's resolution by making a small change, and I mean not even beginning with exercise, by just saying, hey, I don't drink enough water throughout the day, start with just water. So, so start so small that you can't fail. And when you, when that habit no longer becomes hard for you to do, or just becomes part of your everyday thing, that's when you should add in something else. So again, it's, it's not the answer that people want to have that I have a cure to get you in the best shape here's of your life. Here's the secret pill. <laughs> right, here's the secret pill, or here are these powders that you can magically drink. Um, no, it's just knowing yourself, and being being reasonable with yourself, forgiving yourself when you make mistakes, but just allowing yourself to to be able to have room for error, but just be consistent and and don't give up because it's that's the thing is is if you give up then you're gonna have to start over again and that's right. that's never fun. So if you can just stay consistent with one single goal until that becomes easy that's when you begin, you can become more successful with what it is that you're doing. Yeah, one thing I thought was really interesting in Jordan Peterson's book, The 12 Rules for Life, was the concept of you need to treat yourself like your best friend uh, because you're not a slave to yourself, but you're also not like in total control of yourself. You need to figure out a way to work with who you are and your habits and all that. Like so it. and it's like people either get very hard on themselves or they don't push themselves enough and it's like well you need to figure out how you can work together oh yeah absolutely absolutely thanks for listening guys uh, you can check out william in his gym at marshall or his website restoredstrength.com yeah you. another great way to get in contact with me is uh on facebook or instagram at restored strength uh for those of you listening if you're ever wanting to learn more about what it is that we do at my facility or if I can help you in any way when it comes to your own goals, feel free to contact me um, at restoredstrength at gmail.com. I'll be more than happy to answer any emails or questions that you may have. Thanks for listening to the first Sign of Good Health podcast. Please like and subscribe and we'll see you in the next one.